Join us in prayer. We've been talking about prayer all month long, but we're praying that God sends us worshipers. Last night we were calling, uh, we were we were praying, and we said, you know, God, let's call out. Uh, let, 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 let there be a call that goes forth in the city, you know, in in us that God would raise up some leaders. Some leaders say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna take the city by storm. We're gonna do something about the city of Madison. You know, I was talking talking with friends recently. So we got a lot of different friends that have moved into town. And they're like. Yeah, the reputation of Madison is it has this really negative reputation. I said, you know what? We can change. We can do something about that, right? So let's do something about that. Let's pray that way. So this morning, um, uh, we are we are talking about prayer because um, we believe at Catholic Church that God answers our prayers, and it's not just the prayers of the pastors, it's not just the prayers of the leaders that God wants to hear, but He wants to hear His people pray, and He wants to answer our prayers. He's not a respecter of person, but He says. You know what? No matter who you are, no matter what, what phase of life you're in, if you if you pray to me, if you believe and pray, man, he's going to do something. So let's um let's believe he's going to do something. Let's pray this morning before we enter into the Word. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that when we put our faith in you, Father, we get God-sized results. And so to this this month, Father, it's it's all about it's been all about prayer. And Father, we we I ask. God, that today, through your word, God, that you would speak to us, that you would encourage us. Father, that through your word, we'd be challenged. Father, Lord, to be what we are in you. Father, Lord, that our identity would grow. Father, Lord, to be people of prayer, God. And I ask that this church, Father, Capital City Church, we know has been founded on the vision that this would be a house of prayer for all nations. Father, we pray, God, that, you would, that we would begin to see the fulfillment of that vision. God, that this would be a house of prayer for all nations. God, that people from every walk of life, God, would come and have an encounter with you. God, we thank you that you're here with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. I was, uh, again, this, this week just preparing for the, the prayer meeting last night and thinking about, hey, God, what, what do you want to, how do you want to encourage the people? And I was, as I was thinking about what, what we could pray together as a body for, I was thinking about our city and the reputation our city has. I don't know, um, how long many of you guys have been here? You guys are kind of like, like me and Rachel, kind of like planted here in Madison and coming from the outside in. But coming in, and, um, I've heard all this, all these bad reputation things. You know, when Pastor, when he first moved here, he was uh, he came and the, the congregation at that time said, "Yeah, we want, we want Pastor Gina and Bob to come to minister here." And when, when they came, the, the press party board, the, the leaders of our, our church community, they came and they told them, they told them, they said, are you sure you want to come to Madison? You know, Madison is like the graveyard for ministers. It has, even, in, even in ministry, like people of faith, they're like, you know, Madison is a, is a rough place. Or, you know, I, I found out coming here, I was doing some, a little bit of history, like study on Madison. Like, what is the history of Madison? Why is Madison the way it is? People call it like the birthday of the Midwest, though. The riots, so you know, in the sixties and seventies, and all those crazy things that go on. Or even like this week in the news, you go over to Middleton, which is like a suburb of Middleton, and they're doing Jesus lunches, and everybody's getting out of source about these Jesus lunches, and and then then studying and find out in, in the history of the city that there's there's actually oh um, the city was started with a there's a Wiccan community that started the city of Madison. I was like. Oh, it's really interesting. I don't know if Wicked is like a, a, witch, a witchcraft. And, you know, there's, a, there's like this, this history of, of evil. There's this, there's this rebellious nature that um, people have. And I found out recently, that when we were last, last summer, we were preparing that, that Madison ranks in like the top 50 unchurched cities in the U.S. I said, wow, okay, that, that's interesting. For me, you know, I grew up, you guys know, I grew, I grew up like high school years in North Carolina. Went to college in in Missouri. You know, there's a, there's a church in every corner. We had we had 60 Assembly God churches just in in uh, Springfield, Missouri. I mean, just in the city, and and that doesn't include all the Baptist churches every corner. And uh, I mean, there's churches everywhere. And I said, what does it mean to be to live in a city, to be sent to a city of Madison, a, a place that is a top 50 unchurched area? You know, that, that means when I go down the street and I'm talking about like. David and Goliath and Noah and all these Bible stories I used to learn in Bible days in, in uh, Sunday school classes. Like, people don't know these basic stories. You guys know I, I drive a little Uber. It's a lot of fun. I really get to 
But, but the, the thing that I like about Hoover is I really get to know the stories of the city. And people, do, people just don't know. People, just, people hate, hate authority. They, they dislike authority. I was like, where did that come from? It's like, it's like ingrained sometimes in the, in the fabric of, of Madison. And I don't know what it's about. And I said, what am I, God, God what, what is it about Madison? I said, you know what, I gotta, we, let's just be honest, right? So Rachel and I came here last summer, we were kind of like scoping out where we are going to live in Madison. We are like driving around the city. People told us about Sheboygan Avenue where we're, we're living. And there's a couple other places, knowing they have cheap rent. So we were going around the city, and while we were going, there was a song that played. I didn't write down this, this, is, anyway, this is just me talking to you right now, but um, there's a song that, that, um, uh, that, that was playing. It said, uh, it said if, you, if, how was it? if you don't do something, who, who will? If you don't go, who will? Right? And it's just like playing, playing this whole, the whole time. We're, we're searching for apartments. We're like, it's freezing cold. We're playing the song. We're going around. And then, it, you know, God began to show us like Wayne Avenue as a place that he wanted to set up uh, for his gospel, you know, for the sake of the gospel. And we're just like listening to the song. It's like, if, if you don't go, who will? Like, and, and I was thinking about that, and I was like, man. Madison, maybe the maybe the the history, maybe the story of Madison isn't something to be excited about. We got friends that just moved up here. Another friend that moved up on the west side of town from Springfield, Missouri, and she's like, um, it's a it's a anyway, a couple, and they're just like, man, the city of Madison is rough. It's like it's like hard hard to be in. Like people don't like this around here. I'm like, it's all right. We just want to share the love of Jesus, right? And I said, I said, what can I do? What can we do as a church? Talk about prayer, right? What can we do as a church to change the story of Madison? And today it's all going to be about well, how can how can we pray in such a way that the story of Madison will be changed? You know, and I'm hoping that as we talk about as we talk about that, how can we pray for Madison? You also learn some tips of hey, how how can I pray for situations in my life? How can I pray for my mother who's sick? How can I pray for this situation in my life? The thing that, that that seems impossible, and we're gonna we're gonna hopefully learn this morning, or we're gonna be encouraged. Hey, we can stand up and pray. So let's turn. We're going to Ezekiel. We're in chapter 22. And I was just thinking about the story of, as I was thinking about the story of Madison, I was brought again to this passage. Um, and, I, and as I was reading this, I was like, man, this sounds so much like Madison. So Ezekiel, in 22, we're going to read verse 1 through 13 this morning. So the Lord came to me, son of man, will you judge her? Will you judge the city of bloodshed? Then confront her with all her detestable practices and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You city that brings on herself doom by shedding blood in her midst and defiles herself by making idols. You have become guilty because of the blood you have shed and have become defiled by the idols you have made. You have brought your days to a close and to the end of your years has come. Therefore I will make you an object of scorn to the nations and a laughing stock to all the countries. Those who are near and those who are far away will mock you, you infamous city, full of turmoil. See how much see how each of the princes of Israel who are in you uses his power to shed blood. In you they have treated father and mother with con contempt. In you they have oppressed the foreigner and mistreated the fatherless and the widow. You have despised my holy things and desecrated my Sabbath. In you are slanderers, you who are bent on shedding blood. In you are those who eat at the mountain shrine and commit lewd acts. In you are those who dishonor their father's bed. In you are those who violate women during their period when they are ceremonially unclean. In you are one man commits a detestable offense with his neighbor's wife, another shamefully defiles his daughter-in-law, and another violates his sisters, his own fathers and daughters. In you are people who accept bribes and shed blood, who take interest and make a profit from poor. You exhort, extort unjust gain from your neighbors, and you have forgotten me, declares the Sovereign Lord. I was reading this this week, I was just, was the little one heading out? What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, I got you. Thank you for telling me, being mindful of younger ears in the sanctuary this morning. Appreciate that. But um, when I think about this, the city of Madison, I was, I, I, 
told you guys I, I drive Uber, so I was reading this passage again, and you know, I remember my first time I went out past 11 o'clock on Uber. Man, it's a hard, it's a hard thing. Taking, taking these 23 year olds down to State Street for their only goal is to go meet some 18 year old girls so they can introduce them to Madison. It's like, man, it's a rough thing. We got, we got a city that's, that's bent on idols. We, we're getting to know a few of our neighbors, and um, this is going to be recorded, so I will take this out. But we're getting to, to know some of our neighbors, and like our, our Hindu neighbors, we're, we're in their houses, they got like idols lined up on their wall, and their cars, we're taking, taking a ride with them. And I said, you know, what, what can we do about this? Like, what can we do? There's a, there's a city, and because the reality is, right, if I talk from my heart this the reality is we know that in a, in a wicked city, or in a, a people that are, are wicked, we know that the eternal life, the eternal destiny of those in this city that don't know Jesus, I mean, like, the reality hits me that it, the, the real eternal destiny for these people are, is, is, a, is a, a destiny without God, right? And, and so, and I stand up and I'm like, man, I, I've got to do something. What can I do to change this? I mean, what can I do to bring hope into these situations? What can I do for these young men who are out, you know, State Street, hunting down women? I mean, that's, that's, that's their whole purpose on a Saturday night. I'm going to go down, get, get a woman, introduce them to Madison. And it ain't, it ain't going to be just, they will give you a tour of Madison. They're taking them home. They, I mean, like, they're taking innocence from these young girls. What can I do about it? I mean, like, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to minister on campus. So Rachel and I said, okay, we'll, we'll take up the, take up the, the hold of, of Kyle and say, hey, we're, we're going to, we're going to be able to do something. You know, we're talking about uh, caring for, for Karen and being in grave charge. What are we going to do for these, these women and these families that are, that are broken, that need, that need hope, that need a future, that need, need to know that, hey, that it's not just abortion is the last, the only, the only result, but there's actually life that, that is able, there's restoration that, that can happen, there's a family that can be made even in these terrible situations, right? What can we do? So there's things we can do. I think, yeah, there's, there's action calls that we can do to, to change our lifestyle, to, to do something, to be involved in something, but there's another thing that we can do, and I believe it's prayer. That prayer changes things. We've been talking all month long. That prayer changes things. We talked about last week, Pastor mentioned why, why prayers are answered. Why do, we, why do we want to examine that? Because we want to know, hey, if, if I'm praying something, why, why aren't things happening? Because I know God wants to answer prayers, so we need to examine that in our life. What, what's happening? Is there unforgiveness in my life? Am I praying the wrong way? Am I praying on the good But But this morning, how do we change something? How do we get involved with it? How do we change the story of, of, of Madison? Is we're going to pray. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to pray. I'm going to go over a few different points. But we're going to pray. How do we change the story of Matthew? We're going to, we're going to pray bold prayers. Bold prayers. Confident prayers, right? Let's um, look at it. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. Hebrews chapter 4, and, and the book of Hebrews actually, it talks, it talks a lot about the work, of, the work of Jesus as our high priest, the one who, who now has, has made a sacrifice for us, now we have access, now we've been forgiven, now we don't have to continue going back to the temple making the sacrifice, but now we have a relationship with, with the Father because of what Jesus has done. And, and in chapter 4 here, it talks about this ability that we have as believers to pray bold prayers. And in Ephesians, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, it says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who rules over everything, right? right he, the great high priest. There's nobody greater than Jesus, right? We have a great high priest. There's no, uh, I mean, I pray, when I'm praying this over my neighbors, as if there's no idol that they can pray to. There's no, there's nothing in this world that they can pray to that is greater than, than Jesus, right? We have a great high priest who is, has ascended into heaven, Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God. When I was when I was young, um, anybody anybody used to start with like night tears and you know, dreams and things like that. I, I used to deal with that, and uh, so I would always I would always go into my you know go into my mom and dad's room. Be that I'd be that little kid, you know, open the door, crawl up in bed with mom and dad, and I really good parents, you guys don't know that. They're pretty, they're pretty awesome. But I would, I would get up in their bed, and, and Dad would teach me. Dad taught me how to, I mean, 
far back as I can remember, like younger than five years old. I, I remember crawling to bed and, and dad would say, all right, Andrew, you know, you can pray in the name of Jesus and all those things will go away. And then he said, he said, just pray in Jesus' name. And I remember sitting in my bed from that, from, from the air, being able to understand that there was, there was power in his name, that the name of Jesus, right? There's power in that name to, to change things, to change atmosphere, to, to take authority over the enemy. So I remember laying in bed at night and still now, right? Still now, and there's there's things that creep in that that are, are that disrupt the peace in my home and, and just disrupt this, the peace in my soul. That I can remember, you know, I say the name of Jesus. We have a great high priest. His name is Jesus. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who is tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then. Because we have such a high priest, because we have a high priest that knows what we're going through, because we have a high priest that understands what it's like to be disrupted in peace, I mean, I mean he went to the cross, guys, right? You know, you know that, that moment in the garden of, of blood coming from his forehead, it wasn't just a, it wasn't, it was an emotional moment that he knew what was about to take place in his life. We have a high priest that understands this, and he says, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive Mercy, find grace to help us in our time of need. We pray, we can pray bold prayers because we have a high priest who is able, who knows what we're going through. And he says, you can approach my throne now because the blood of Jesus is covered. We can approach his throne boldly. I mean, what would it look if we started praying bold prayers about the city of Madison? I mean, I remember an example in at Purdue University we, where Chi Alpha is, if you, if you don't understand, Calvin isn't just like a, a ministry to the university. It actually operates as a student organization. And so at Purdue University, we, we had instances where we were doing some different things on campus. We were doing some outreaches and doing advertisements and things on campus. And there was, there was one gentleman in all the university that needed to approve certain, um, certain organizations to be able to do these things on campus, whether we reserved a room, we did some kind of um, big outreach or things. This one gentleman had to approve it. And we noticed over the years, not only our uh, student organization, Kyle, but other Christian organizations, when it came to certain outreaches or certain things that we're doing on campus, that this one individual, everybody else would approve it, it would go through approval, 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 then it would get to his office, and he would uh, he would disapprove things. Or at times he would come, uh, come across, and there was one time we noticed, I mean, this was our fault too, but there was a signature that was missing on one of our papers, and he shut down things the day of, that we're, we're already out there, we're already planned it, already spent all this money, and then he disallowed it. There's just different things that, he, that we noticed when he was, when things had to come to his desk, that he would disapprove Christian things from happening on campus. And so, we as a, we as a group just decided, we need to pray some, some, some bold prayers. There's some in, injustices that were happening even, even beyond, you know, the missignature. But there's some, some true injustices happening with things that we're trying to do on campus. We said, man, this is, this is ungodly. And so we said, you know what? We're going to start praying a bold prayer. So for a while, we just prayed, God, would we, we pray that this gentleman would have an encounter with you and come uh, and, and repent, and then he would be saved. Like, that would change the atmosphere of Purdue, and to, to get one of the VPs at, at Purdue University to, to repent and get saved, and it would feel, I mean, it would really, really awesome. So we just prayed that way, right? Bold prayers. This uh, ungodly man, a man that he would, he would get bold, he would, he would um, bring bold prayer, but then then after after time and times of praying that, we we, we started examining our prayers, kind of like we talked about last week. Said, Why aren't these these prayers getting answered? And we said, you know, let, let, let's change our prayer. We said, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna pray bold prayers. Said, God, we're, we're just pray. God, would you remove him from office? Because either then we started adding to our prayers. So we said, either God, I mean, I think that's the best thing. God is a God of restoration. God, allow him to repent, or God, remove him from his office. And the week that we started, the week after we started praying that way, students praying, just God, bring this man, and we knew him, we knew him by name, we called him by name, God, bring him to repentance, or God, remove him from the office, that, that we would just have, there would be a freedom for the Christians on campus, that we could be, continue to reach the campus. And within a week, there was a news article that came out on a Saturday, that this gentleman, I mean, he, a VP of, of Purdue University, like, making some hundred thousand dollars, good, I mean, good salary to, Good home, he's, he's taken care of. He went to Walmart, and he went to Walmart with his little buggy. They had it on video camera, 
And he went down the aisle, he picked up some pillows and some big comforters and some light bulbs. It was like a total, the total bill was like $56. And he went, he checked out, he went out to his car, put all this stuff in his car. Then he, then he brought the receipt back to the store, went and grabbed the same items again, like $56, $56, and went back out and, oops, so he had his receipt from his previous purchase, went and took it and put it back. Then he did it again, and he put all of this stuff back in his car, went to the, went to the customer service, and like got, you know, exchanged the stuff that he didn't purchase so that he got $56 back. And then on his way out to the car, it was around October time, so there was, um, uh, so there was pumpkins outside of Walmart, or, and so he took like three pumpkins, put it in his car, and put it in his car. I remember mean, like, I mean, the whole community was like, what is going on? So they, they called it, please, they, they arrested the dude, he, he'd been doing this like his whole life, just stealing from Walmart and other local stores, and he, I mean, there's a VP, I mean, and I said, okay, oh God, he, we're playing some bold prayer. He was, of course, removed from his position. They put a, the person that got in shortly after that was um, was Mitch Daniel. He was a godly president of a, a, a godly man. I mean, like it changed the whole atmosphere of Purdue University, where we begin to start seeing things in the in the spiritual realm shift because hey, there's been this rebellious moment. Like, what if we begin as a people praying for our city in this way? I mean, this you know we're home of the freedom from religious group. That's the that their home base is here in Madison. And what if we start praying for their repentance? Man, God, I pray that, that you would change the whole agenda of that of that of that uh, nonprofit. They would they would come into repent. They would come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. They would change the whole. That instead of them being against God, God and His, and, and His decree, they'd actually be promoting your kingdom here in Madison. I mean, they, I mean these are big prayers, but. We can pray those kind of prayers. He was, we can pray those bold prayers because we have a high priest. Man, who's able to do it. He's high above every other name. Name of Jesus. Let's pray some bold prayers and start seeing the story of Madison changing. So what's another way that we can pray? And I, you know, I'm like, this is, I, I thought about this point. I'm like, you know, this is, I do I really need to bring this point up? I was like, you know what? We, we need to pray this too. We, not only do we pray bold prayers, but we need to pray prayers of faith. And of course, I mean, I don't pray. I, don't, I mean, I pray and I, I pray prayers of faith. And I said, no, we need to pray. We need to pray prayers of faith, guys. I take prayers seriously, right? Like, well, there was this moment, anybody, uh, so I was with a new believer and I was fixing my car. And, uh, there was something I was. We were doing the brakes, and I couldn't get the the, the wheel off of my uh, the drum. Like the drum, anyway, it was like sealed together with some rocks, right? So I couldn't get the wheel off to change the brake. And so I was, I was just unaware, flippant, you know, kind of flippant prayer, kind of cliche prayer. I was just like, okay, God, I pray, you know, the, 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 that you would you would help the tire be loose. And then, you know, I, I'm honest, right? I didn't mean the prayer. I, don't know. I was just like, just like, kind of like we're, we're, I was like, I didn't did it, you know. And, I was like, and afterward, I didn't think anything of it. it. It still didn't come off right. The tire didn't come off. So later, you know, I you know fixed it, and a week later, I'm talking with the, I was with the new believer while I was doing this, right? And, I flipped. and his mother got a diagnosis from the doctor. This is, I mean, this is serious, right? The mother got a diagnosis from the doctor, and so I said, all right. How, let's, let's pray for your mother that, that she would be healed. And he, he brought up, yeah, but you prayed last week for the tire, the thing on the tire, and it didn't come off. I said, I said, oh, big dream on my heart, right? We need to be people who pray prayers of faith. Our prayers, our word, our prayers are not just words. We're not just like speaking things in the air when we're praying. We're, we're praying to God. We're, we're praying to a God who is able, right? In Hebrews 11, uh, 11, 1, it, right, it gives that little, a, a good definition of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We need to pray in such a way that the things that we, we, we the things that our minds, I can see that, that they will, they actually want to happen. Like we're going to believe what we're praying. We're gonna believe. We're gonna have. We're gonna have bold prayer. We're gonna have common prayer. But we're gonna believe that it's gonna happen. The 
mixed in with the prayer. Man, and power. There's power in a faith-filled prayer. There's enough. God, you're able to do these things. You can do it. You can. I believe it. Amen. And if you, and if you and if, and if say in this room, and if I'm honest, and you know what? Sometimes I don't, I don't believe. Get get with a believer that can, that can partner with you and say, man, you know, man, you know, I know you're men of faith. Like like, can you pray with me, man? Let's partner, let's be a, a body that together we pray prayers of faith that we can see things start changing. Matthew 18, 18 says this really powerful verse. says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's a power, that's a power that we have in prayer. And, and when Jesus was teaching his disciples, that would ask them, Jesus, how shall we pray? He said, pray that my kingdom will come on earth as in heaven. I pray those, pray those kind of prayers. What would it look like, right, if we really believe that my neighbors, Rachel might start praying this crazy prayer, right? There's a story in the Old Testament when the, when the Ark of the Covenant was, was with the people, that the idols of those people begin to fall down. I said, what if we pray faith-filled prayers, bold prayers, God, do something with our neighbors, do something in our neighborhood, do something around us that only can be identified with you. I believe that, I believe in it. Believe with us that we can pray prayers that change things. Prayer is full of faith. You know, we pray prayers of faith. Sometimes it requires us to totally let go of the results. Sometimes, if we're honest, it's the hardest thing about prayer. It seems like this mundane, regular activity. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray the things, but I still wanna. I'm still going to hold on to it because I want to try to do do something about it. I was talking with, with somebody recently about this, and they they had been praying praying for God to come through in an area, but they knew that they had a little some they they had a little part in in that prayer like coming coming to pass, right? That that okay, that there's something in their life that seemed to be possible. They're like, okay, well I'll hold on to this possibility and I'll pray. So maybe that you would kind of do something with it. But then recently they, they found out that actually what they've been holding on to wasn't even true. It was false. Like, like it's, a, it's, a fake, it's a false thing. That they had been holding on to this thing. Maybe this little bit of thing would help out God in these prayers. And, like, and then now they found out, oh, actually, no, that what they've been holding on to isn't even true. And now they're faced with the circumstance that they're still praying. They still, they still want to believe that this has happened. But that security that they can do something about it, like, kind of helped them in the prayer. They're like, all right. I, I want to believe God, but I'm kind of going to do something like it's okay, I got this. So now that I'm both, now I don't have anything, and I actually have to believe the God of the impossible is going to be able to do those things in my life. I'm telling you, that's the kind of that's the kind of faith that we can have. Say, yeah, God, even when it looks like nothing, everything's against me, when I even think that the situation is, is terrible, they think that there's nothing that's going to be able to happen. That's when we put it in God, that's when we have the greatest amount of faith. Because they think, I, I, I can't do anything for it. I'm, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to just put it in your hand completely. I have that kind of faith. Do you have, can we have that kind of faith together? God, do the impossible. The last thing we think of, when we think, how's our, how's our city going to change? Is that we be a people of the Spirit. That we pray in the Spirit. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8 real quick. Jesus, when he was getting ready to head to the cross, right, he was talking to his disciples about the Spirit. That the Spirit's going to come, he's going to reveal things about me that, that previously you've been, uh, you've been able, unable to know, but when I leave, the Holy Spirit's going to come, he's going to reveal things to you, he's going to be the comforter, he's, he's, going, to be, he's going to speak truth to you. And in, in Romans chapter 8, it, it, it's like another increase of this, this Spirit and the ability we have to pray in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. It says this, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit, it's, it himself, intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the God's people in accordance to God's will. 
We know in Acts chapter 2, the Spirit of God was poured out on all flesh. His sons and his daughters, right? His old, the old and the young. The Spirit of God was poured out. And in Romans, it gives us this picture that what is the Spirit, when we begin to pray in the Spirit, that we pray in the Spirit because why? Because the Spirit prays according to the will of God. Remember last week we talked about why are, and why are some of our prayers not answered? We said sometimes we're not praying the will of the Father. We're not praying the will of God. We're praying our own desires. How do we become, well, how do we pray? Somebody asked me one time, how do you pray a perfect prayer? I pray in the Spirit. Because the Spirit, He groans with, with, with words un, unnatural, right? He moans with the words of people, but He prays the, the perfect will of God. Pray in the Spirit. Be people of the Spirit. And I was Somebody asked me one time, you know, like sometimes I really want to, I really want to pray for this situation. Maybe we're talking about um, injustices and talking about the care and the different ladies there, you know. And I don't, I don't really know what to pray. So my, sometimes I, I tell them, well, if you really want to, you know, pray, and you know, a, a prayer, you know, go ahead and I use this aid sometimes. Try, try to imagine yourself in their shoes. If you're a young, younger woman or a, or a you know boyfriend, or something you guys are, you're. Um, you kind of like guys are pregnant, you guys are young, and and what would it feel like to be in their shoes? So that's a that's a good paraphrase, right? Put yourself in the shoes of the of the others in that injustice. The poor, the, the weak, the sick, whatever. So we can pray for those people. And the second thing, I mean the greatest advice here, the Romans eight, the pray in the spirit. Pray be people of the spirit. You got, to, you got to, your prayer language, and then pray in the spirit. Pray, I mean, when we're talking about the government, I, I started praying for the government, and I, and I know some different things to pray for, and I, I know different things to pray for the school in Middleton, I can like read the article, and pray. but then I get to the point sometimes I'm exhausted, I don't know what else to pray. I'm, I'm praying for my neighbors in, 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 our, in our building, and I'm like, and, and sometimes I, to, to end my prayer, I'm like, I don't know what to pray, but I still have this yearning that there's something that God wants to do, and I said, you know what, it's time to pray in the spirit. I just want to start praying the Spirit. You know, like, we're, not, we're not going to stay 24 hours praying the Spirit. And, you know, like pray, uh, pray all day long, have like 10 hour prayer meetings. No, but we'll pray in the Spirit, and the Spirit going to pray a perfect prayer for that individual. And things begin to change. Right? Atmospheres begin to change when we can pray in the Spirit and ask God to do his, what only He can do. He changes things. Sometimes when I'm praying in the Spirit and praying during my prayer time and just take a little time and I'm uh, praying English and I'm praying in the Spirit and then the Spirit will remind me of scriptures to pray. And so then I then he reminds me and I'm like, oh yeah, God, I remember that scripture. Let me, let me pray for the for like the the, the Lucas that says that give me a vengeance for my for my enemies. And I pray that over over people in this in our community that are that are dealing with injustices and I pray, God, give them, give them vengeance from their enemies. The Spirit reminds me of that. The Spirit enhances our prayer time. He, is, he enables us to pray beyond our own uh, our own being, our own knowledge. Pray in the Spirit. And if you know, if this morning, like, like Pastor Andrew, I don't know, I don't even know what you mean by praying in the Spirit. Come, come after me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about what it means to pray in the Spirit. That there's a gift that, that God has for each one of us to be able to be full of the Spirit and be able to pray prayers that, that are beyond our English capabilities. Yes, prayers of power. So if, if that's you this morning, I, I encourage you, after, after service comes, if that's your to explain to me some more. So what does this mean? Pray in the Spirit. But I, if all these things, so we, we're praying bold prayers, right? We can pray bold prayers, we can pray prayers of faith, we can pray prayers of Spirit. But I want you to turn back to Ezekiel chapter 22. As I was thinking about this morning, you know, I was like, I'm going to go on and no whole other month about prayer. But, pray prayer. Pray prayers of faith. Pray bold prayers. Pray in the Spirit. But Ezekiel 22, we have this, right, it was this description of Jerusalem at this time. They were ungodly. They had idols. They were, they were idolatrous. They were sleeping with another, one another. They were, they were worshiping other gods. They were, they were evil. There's a description of, of evil that, that was just given, right? Ezekiel 22. But let's turn over now to, to uh, verse 23. 22, chapter 22, verse 23. And I was like, as I was preparing for this message, God was like, this, make this point. So I said, okay, I'll make sure I'll make this point. <laughs> There's, there's a piece that's missing. We've talked about prayer all month. 
Like I talk about prayer all my, all month long, all year long. I can, we can have a prayer meeting, we can do all these things, right? But there's, there's one thing missing so far. 23. Again, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, save the land. You are a land that has not been cleansed or rained on in the, in the day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princes within her. Like a roaring lion tearing its prey, they devour people, take treasures and precious things, and make many widows within her. Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy thing. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean, and they shut their eyes to keeping of my Sabbath, so that I am profane among them. Her officials within her are like wolves, tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gains. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lame divinations. They say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land practice exhortation and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner and deny them justice. If anything, I've, as I've learned about the city, and I've been in the city now almost a year, and I'm doing these Uber rides and getting to know people, like I, I'm like, this is such a description. I mean, this is such a description of Madison. Verse 30, though, is what got me was like, man. Verse 30 says, I looked for someone among them who would build up a wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land, so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. I don't know about you, sometimes when I'm reading the word, right? There's, there's like, there's, there's reading the word, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do my daily plan, so I got my, my things to read, or, or like I'm, I'm then there's other times where I'm reading and I'm studying a certain subject, and sometimes, as in the middle of my reading, you know, things just hit you, right? And I'm like, wow, that wasn't just, it wasn't just a word on the page, it was like, it was like the Spirit was speaking. I was talking with a pastor about prayer, and we want to be, we want to be a church known as ones who stand in the gap. And when, when God looks across Madison and the men, I'm like, I want us to be people that God says, man, I know, man, we got some people that are going to stand together. I got some people that, that, that know how to pray, that, that believe in prayer, that are going to pray some, some bold prayers for Madison, that's going to be, be able to pray some bold prayers for their family, for the situation. That, man, we got, we got people at Capital City Church, a family that, that's there that, that man, they, they pray prayers of faith. And they just want to look at in Madison and say, man, these are people that, that pray prayers of faith. These, these are people that know how to pray and contend in the spirit. Like these are, man, these are my people that are going to stand in the gap for the city of Madison. And they, and they told me, that they just, hey, Andrew, Andrew, make the call this morning. And call the people of Capital City Church, the family we are. We, we said we're a family of servant missionaries. We, we believe we're brothers and sisters in this room. We said, man, call them the prayer. Call them to stand in the gap. And that's kind of the call this morning. Man, are, are we going to be people that want to stand in the gap? I mean, I'm not, I, there's, a, there's a story of Madison, but I know there's a God story, there's a redemptive story that can take place in the city. Are we going to be people of prayer? And are we going to start changing things? Now, I mean, that's not, that might be something, but hey, I said, it's not anything we do, it's something God does, but man, there's, there's, he's looking for us to pray. There's a, a neat thing about the mission of God. God's on a mission to redeem and restore the world, right? And what's really humbling and amazing is he chooses us to get involved in his mission. That man, we want to see Madison restored. Let's be people of prayer. Let's be people who pray those bold prayers, that pray prayers of faith, that pray in the spirit, and do something about it. The injustice is in this city. I don't look out at us this morning. that are willing 
willing to contend in the spirit realm, to take back anything the enemy has stolen and disrupted and corrupted, Father. Jesus, when the disciples asked you how to pray, you told them, pray that my kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we take a moment to pause and say, Father, we pray for Madison. Father, I pray for my neighbors. I pray for those riders that I have. Father, I pray for my uh, family's co-workers that they're with every day. For those who are at school, their classmates, their professors, their TAs. Father, we know that the story of Madison may look bleak, it may look dark, but Father, Lord, where there's greatest darkness, Lord, your light shines the greatest. So Father, we, we pray in faith, we put our city in your hands, and we say, God, do something that only you can do. Father, change the story of Madison, change our story, that we may be found people of faith that will stand in the gap for those who are facing injustices this morning, Father. morning in a way of response to the message. If you, if you would hear the call this morning, say, call the Father, say, will you stand in the gap? You say, man, I, I want to be, Andrew, I want to be a person that stands in the gap for my city. I want to be a person that, that stands in the gap for my family. I want to be a person that stands in the gap for injustice. I want to invite you to stand this morning. And you're standing this morning not in front of me. You're standing in front of God saying, yeah, God, I want to be that. I want to, I want to be a person that stands in the gap and prays bold prayers, prays prayers of faith, prays prayers of the Spirit. So that's what this morning. I would invite you to stand and say, yeah, I, I'll stand in the gap with you, Andrew. I'll stand in the gap with you, Pastor. I'll, I'll pray for this city. That's what this morning. We'll stand Father, I thank you this morning that you're doing something, Father. You're, you're challenging us. You're, you're encouraging us, Father. Lord, you're, you're taking us, Father, another step forward. God, I pray, Lord, we, we thank you for the vision that you gave Pastor, Lord, when he, when he first got here. He said, this will be a house of prayer for all nations. Father, I pray, God, that from this day forward, we can look back at this series and say, yeah, this was a, this was a turning point at Capital City Church when, when we begin to pray bold prayers. Father, when we're ready to pray prayers of faith, when we get to stand in the gap for those that are the injustices in our city. Father, I thank you for that. And God, I pray for each one standing this morning, and any, anyone even that didn't make a decision to stand. Father, we, we pray, God, that, that we would develop a, a life of prayer, God, a moment of prayer, God, a, a people of prayer, that, that we would be like those people in the book of Acts. That they said, those are the people that are turning the world upside down. They were, in Acts 4, said, those were ordinary people, but they could tell they had met with Jesus. God, I pray that we would be those kind of people, that they would be, would be people that we have met with Jesus, and we change things around us because of our faith and prayer. God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, we look forward, Father, to what you're going to do, how things are changing in the atmosphere, even now, as we stand and say, yeah, God, we're going to be people who stand in the gap. Father, I bless your children this morning. I'm going to ask that each one, Father, this week would receive from you, Father, something that's going to take them forward in their walk with you. God, we thank you for these moments with you. Well, then if you want to go ahead and play some music, if you feel like, hey, man, that, that's challenging me, and in this moment, I just I want to take some time and pray. 